Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Yeah, this was joint work with Anjal Batini, Tai Duong, Shai Guaron, Arthur Lux, and Sophie Schmick. And this talk today will be about a very curious property of authenticated encryption, which is key commitment. So just to bring everyone on kind of same terms, so authenticated encryption is really what's used to encrypt the bulk traffic on the internet. So conceptually, it's a quite simple primitive. So you put in some plain text, some key, and it outputs a cipher text in an authentication tag. And you can also decrypt the cipher text again by putting in the cipher text in the tag, and you get the plain text. So very simple symmetric key cryptography. Now, the nice thing is with authenticated encryption is that it not only provides the confidentiality of the plain text, but also authenticity. So whenever the uh, bit flips in the cipher text, this will be detected, and the algorithm will output this is invalid and not leak any information about the plain text. So what we are looking at now is not, we're not changing the ciphertext, but we're changing the key. And it's unclear what happens then. So the standard security notions like in CCA2, they don't cover basically what, what happens in this case, because we're not uh, violating here the security notion of authenticated encryption, but looking at something different. And Surprisingly, like you might intuitively think if I decrypt the ciphertext with the wrong key, it should output invalid. But this is not always the case. So what we looked at in our paper is basically are there like real world scenarios where this can be an issue if you switch the key and it's not detected? Then we looked like at practical ways, like how could you exploit this actually? And we provide like some simple and efficient fixes on how can you patch like existing authenticated encryption schemes to get this property back again. And as part of the paper, we also like de develop tools which allow you to like automate the text and create like useful examples. So you're probably wondering like, yeah, if you change the key, like you need a lot of control. So it's like, it's very unclear whether this is really an issue at first, but I wanna show you like one example from the paper which we found which is envelope encryption. So this is like, a, it's used by all the major cloud providers and it's also recommended for their customers to use envelope encryption, where the idea is like you pick a symmetric key, encrypt your data, and then you wrap that key with a key management system. So how does this look like? Yeah, you again have a plain text, you generate a random key to encrypt the data, and you get out a cipher text. And what you then do is, so for every recipient you want to send this ciphertext to, you wrap the symmetric key under their public key, for instance. So in this case, there's a user A, we wrap his key and attach it to the ciphertext. So when the user receives the whole plop, they can just extract the, the key and decrypt the original ciphertext. And if you have a second user, we just again wrap the key of the second user and also attach it to the ciphertext. But now the interesting thing is, so the person who sends the ciphertext, they don't have to wrap the same key for each user. So for instance, they could use a, a different key, which does not correspond to the ciphertext. And the problematic property is here, it's impossible to detect for the users here whether they get the same key wrapped, because the keys are encrypted under the, the keys of each individual user. So they cannot distinguish from each other whether they got the same key. However, they can see they got the same ciphertext. So what can happen then is like, yeah, both users get the, the ciphertext but decrypted with a different key. And our goal is like to show that actually one person can decrypt to some malicious plaintext and the other person gets the expected plaintext. So to summarize this, this example, basically, both recipients, they see exactly the same binary blob and therefore might falsely assume like, hey, if we both decrypt this ciphertext, we will end up with the same content. However, if you have an authenticated encryption scheme which is not key committing, this is not the case. And for instance, one example we found was the AWS encryption SDK, which before version 2.0 was vulnerable to this and has been patched since then. And in the last couple of years, like a lot of more practical examples popped up. So 
this property that you can find this kind of keys has been known at least for some schemes for a while, but it was always unclear if this is an issue in practice. And in our paper, we give some other examples like key rotation. So it can happen you execute some key rotation and suddenly a previous ciphertext decrypts to something different. Also, we found an example in subscribe with Google, but for the details, see the paper. And I would also yeah, want to mention like there was the Facebook message ranking for the abuse reporting. It was like one of the first really nice practical examples abusing this property. And also last year at Usenic, there was the partitioning Oracle attack which showed like password-based authenticated key exchanges can also suffer from lack of key commitment. And I also found very recently a student project from ETH which looked at the H file encryption tool. So this encryption tool to provide similar functionalities as PGP. And they also showed that this is not key committing and you can construct like similar examples. So how do you exploit this actually? So the good thing or bad thing is like, yeah, most of the commonly used authenticated encryption schemes, they don't, are not key committing. So like AES, GCM, Charger 20, Poly 1305, they are not key committing. So it's very easy to find or construct key, two keys which decrypt the same ciphertext valid. And in our paper, we also found some uh, other attacks on like AES, GCM, SRV, which you might think it's, it's a more robust scheme, but it suffers from the same properties. And also OCB3, which is conceptually a bit different, surprisingly also doesn't have this property. But yeah, like how can we actually exploit this in practice? So can we get like meaningful plain text out of this? And there are like a lot of restrictions in practice. So like the cryptographic attacks, they put like restrictions on like you have to have some random blocks of data somewhere to correct the authentication tag. You might have to pad certain things. So you get a lot of different restrictions. And on the other side, like, I mean, we're interested not in like just creating any plain text. We want to create valid files so we can fool a user, for instance, to execute a binary or open a PDF or a website. And file formats put a lot of restrictions on the content. So there's like, you might have like some magic static sequences. You might have specific headers length fields, there's basically an endless list if you look across file formats, what can be restrictions on this. So can we still create like meaningful things? And yes, so in our paper we provide uh, all the tooling which supports like over 40 file formats and you can do like 270 combinations and completely automated. So you give like a PDF and a binary and our tools merge this and allow you to construct a single ciphertext out of it. So we made like examples, yeah, like, like a PDF and an executable. So it's a little Easter egg, our ePrint paper. If you, if you download the ePrint paper, you can encrypt it, decrypt it with a different key and you get a PDF viewer. So you can watch the, the paper in the, with the paper. So to give you yeah, some intuition, like how, how does this work? So HTML is a good example because it's, it's, it's Everyone knows it a little bit and it's, it's quite easy to construct. So this is uh, how a source file might look like where we combine two HTML files. So basically you have like yeah, the top content and uh, the bottom content and then there's like some padding and some block we need for correcting the authenticity. And then you end up like with this ciphertext. So this is like a single ciphertext. And when you decrypt with one key, you get this content. So if you look at it, there's like yeah, some prefix, but this gets commented out in the HTML. And then you see a Hello World page if you open this in your browser. And it's, it's definitely not invisible. I mean, you have like random blobs of data, so it's definitely suspicious, but the browser will just render it. So a user might not detect this without looking closer. And this is the result if you decrypt it with the second key. So you, again, like we use this trick, you comment out part of the, the nonsense. And this will show the user website linking to evil.com. So how can we actually add key commitment? So 
In literature, there's actually, there are a lot of schemes which are more robust and are already key committing. So if you really need this and want to uh, free in the choice of the, the authenticated encryption scheme you use, you, you could just fall back on those schemes. And also, like a lot of schemes might be key committing. So for instance, if you just use AES counter plus HMAC, it seems difficult to break this property. But in our paper, we focused on like, we want to fix the existing schemes. So in many protocols, we standards, we have to use AES GCM. And I, I won't go into detail, so you can look in the paper, but we provide like two different options how to fix in GCM or similar schemes the key committing property. And I'd also like to point out another paper which was just recently published at Eurocrypt, which also provides a more general view on like committing to the inputs of the authenticated encryption. And they also provide some very efficient constructions how to patch existing authenticated encryption schemes. So the main takeaway from this talk should be like, yeah, the lack of key commitment can be a problem in practice. So there are real world scenarios and if you design protocols, it might be good to keep in, in your mind that, hey, maybe this key committing is a problem if I rely on, on the assumption that the wrong key will never decrypt well it. And another takeaway I think is that if we design new authenticated encryption schemes, it would be good if like we understand are the key committing or not. Because like a lot of schemes I see getting published and this, this property is just ignored. Like we had like a Caesar competition running for authenticated encryption. And for many schemes, we have no idea are the key committing or not. So people should do analysis and ideally prove that their scheme provides this property. Yeah, and there are a bunch of resources available, our ePrint paper, then we have the tooling for the file formats and the tooling for the cryptographic attacks. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, please go ahead.